The next command that we're going to look at is the drop DDL or data definition language statement. Drop is pretty much self-explanatory. It doesn't take much to comprehend, so we're not going to spend much time focusing on it. However, you should know the types of objects defined within the DBMS that drop will allow you to drop and some of the rules required and so on when using drop. So let's set up a section. We'll define it as drop DDL statement. The drop statement allows the privileged user to drop the following DBMS objects. One, databases. This is the container or object, logical object type that is at top the hierarchy within a DBMS system. Two, tables. Tables are right beneath databases and define the structure of the fields, columns, and data types that you are going to store within a database. Three, indexes or indices, however you'd like to call it, can be dropped as well using the drop statement. Now, with tables, we should also mention that this also includes, so we should list also temporary tables. So if you have a table set up in memory that's connection specific, you can use drop to drop that particular table as well. We should start from the top of the hierarchy, which is the most dangerous object to drop because it clobbers all of the sub-objects or objects beneath the hierarchy, which includes tables. And we should, we'll just indent this to reflect the relationships. Databases are atop logically, tables are beneath, and indices or indexes are tied to tables, which we've yet to look at. We're going to look at indexes soon. So let's look at the top. We're going to create a dummy database, give it a table, and then drop it. So task, create dummy database and table, then drop the DB and analyze file system effects. So to complete this task, let's go ahead and create a dummy database. We'll create database, and it's always safe to use the if not exists clause. If not exists, dummy underscore db. This should suffice. It'll use a default character set and collation, and we'll have a logical container for new tables shortly. So in order to create of course a database you need to have create privileges on a global basis which means what if you haven't or if you don't recall it means from the MySQL database if we use MySQL and then show tables it means that you need to have permissions within the user table on a global scale within MySQL if you if you are granted permissions within the user table it means you can perform those permissions or privileges globally throughout the DBMS's reach, which may or may not include one or more hosts, at least one host, maybe more hosts. But the bottom line is if you're defined for a given permission, if it's turned on within the user table, you can carry out that privilege or execute that privilege. So to create a DB, you need certain privileges. Let's go ahead and attempt to create that DB. Now we're logged in as the most privileged user so we won't have any problems creating these objects. We'll follow that up with a show databases command and you'll see that the new DB, dummy DB exists but it contains no tables. Let's use dummy DB and once within a show tables will reveal that there are no tables. Having said that, let's go ahead and create a dummy contacts table. So we will create table if not exists dummy TBL. In fact, let's not call it dummy, let's just call it names. 
or contacts TBL contacts underscore TBL and then we'll need to define between parentheses open and close parentheses the structure of this table which usually includes an auto incremented field that's just our default so let's go ahead and define it ID integer auto increment which is case insensitive as you've may or may not recall from the last definition when we created a temporary table so it's auto incremented and it is going to be the primary key followed by perhaps name and that should suffice because we're trying to communicate drop not really create so let's go ahead and make the name column of var car 30 column and then we have the terminating parentheses at the end so this should allow us to create this new table let's bring this all up to the same line and copy the DDL statement we'll return to the DB and attempt to create the table now we have a new table let's show tables again there's the contacts underscore TBL table we can describe contacts underscore TBL and you'll see it contains two columns one is an ID column which gets auto incremented and will accept nulls which result in the next value and the other is name which which will also accept nulls so this is very simple now to go ahead and drop this particular table we could do one of two things we could either drop the table directly using the drop statement or drop the database which will drop both the database and the table but before doing so let's show you how this particular database is represented on the file system from a separate window let's su in and then navigate to varlib mysql where all databases are stored notice that the most recently created entry which is why we use lsltr to sort by the most recently created entry towards the bottom is called dummy underscore db and databases are represented by directory containers let's navigate into dummy underscore db and you'll see that there exists a few files the db.opt file contains information related to collation and character set let's cat db.opt and you'll see it contains the character set which defaults to Latin 1 which serves for Western Europe and United States as well as the default collation Latin 1 underscore Swedish underscore CI which also serves for the same user community primarily Western Europe and the United States in terms of English and the various romance languages so there are enough characters within the Latin 1 character set to take care of English Spanish French and all those various languages and the default collation is Latin 1 Swedish CI again we can define per database as well as per table collation as well as car character set super so that's what the db opt file does now when you do drop databases the db dot opt file will be removed if it exists if you drop a table however the db dot opt file will not be removed and we'll begin by removing the table first to prove that then removing the database notice that there are three files which seem to correlate to the table that we just defined because they do when using MySQL, especially with its default binary RPM distribution that we've installed on an x86 based system, it defaults to using the files and database types that you see here, including the suffixes MYI, MYD, and FRM. Beginning with MYI, this is the actual index for the database now, or for the table that is. Now, you may be wondering why does such a small table with no data contain indexes? by virtue of defining an auto incremented column an index gets created that explains why there's an MYI file in the dummy underscore DB subdirectory because the ID column is a primary key column and as a result there is an index maintained by MySQL if you were to attempt to look at contacts underscore table TBL that is dot MYI for example you'll see that the file appears to be gibberish because it is in a binary form a file star however returns that the file is in all likelihood a MySQL my ISAM or ISAM type compressed database file it's really an index file the default engine type is ISAM or my, my ISAM which is the more enhanced of the two 
and as a result the tables and indices will reflect suffixes that reflect the MyISAM storage engine. The form file however describes the table which includes the structure of the table. Let's attempt to cat contacts underscore tbl frm and you'll see it too contains gibberish but if you look real carefully you'll see information that seems to be in ASCII such as primary key, the fact that it's my ISM, as well as ID, name, etc. It is binary, but it defines the contacts underscore TBL table. So again, to recap, when you define a table, especially when it contains an index, you're likely to see three files within the database directory. An index file, the database or the table file that is within the database, this MYD file actually represents the table information. So if you have a thousand records, they'll be in this MYD file. If you have zero records, then the MYD file is blank. And then there's an FRM file which describes the table, which also includes as a part of the description the fact that the table contains one to n number of indexes. Super. So, that's, so that you understand that, let's go ahead and attempt to drop the table to see what's removed from the file system. From within MySQL, simply execute a drop table. And in this case, we need to specify the name of the table. It is the contacts underscore TBL table. And just like that, the table has been dropped. But to prove that it no longer exists on the file system, we'll return to the file system and re execute an LSLTR. But just like that, as mentioned and as promised, the db.opt file, which defines the collation and the character set supported by the database, is preserved because the logical container database still exists and can be made available to house additional tables. So its information is preserved. But all table related information is wiped as a result of running the drop command. So be very careful when running drop. In order to recreate the table structure, we'll have to find the syntax, hopefully if we've saved it somewhere, or simply reconstruct it. It's still in our history, so it's not a big deal to recreate. And once we've recreated it, we'll return to the file system where you'll see the same three files. MYI, a blank table data file, and a form file which describes the MYD file, which is blank but does have a structure. If we insert data into this particular table, the file will grow. Let's insert into contacts underscore TBL being the name of the table. And we need to specify values, including a default for the auto ID. Or we could use a set form and leave it up to the database to handle the defaults for us. So we could simply say set name equivalent to, let's say, Dino. Once that's complete, we'll select star from contacts underscore table, just to be sure our data is there. But MySQL assured us by telling us the number of rows that were affected. And we'll select star from contacts underscore table. And you'll see that it contains one record, auto incremented ID, and the name that I specified. Let's take a look from the file system's vantage point as to how the MYD file has changed. It now appears to be 20 bytes in length. If you attempt to cat it, however, because the format that's stored is actually a binary format, the only thing that echoes to the screen appears to be gibberish. So, so far it's taking 20 bytes to represent this particular value. They may be wondering, is there any correlation to the size of the varcar character? Well, let's describe contacts underscore TBL. And what you'll see is that the varcar allows up to 30, so potentially 30 bytes, as well as room for the integer field. But with varcar, if you recall, each row is taxed or represents a different storage amount. For example, in a column where the name occupies only five characters, then that particular field, if varcar is set and it's less than 255, will occupy just five bytes. But then there's also a value in the ID column, and then there's also overhead for managing the DB. 
so it's occupying currently 20 bytes on the file system. Let's go ahead and insert another value to see how much more this file grows. So we'll insert into contacts. This time let's set a name to another Linux CBT folk. And then we'll select star from contacts table. We now have two folks listed. We'll LSLTR and notice that the file has grown from 20 to 40. So for each row that we're entering, MySQL is alloc allocating 20 bytes from the file system to store that information. Notice that the form file, the FRM file, hasn't changed across all of our operations. The description of the contacts underscore TBL table remains the same. Notice also that the index file still is 2048 or 2K. So it too hasn't changed. Super. So now that you understand that, drop can be used to drop certain tables. We can go ahead and duplicate the contacts underscore TBL table using the syntax that we recently learned. We'll just take it from here. We'll make it like the existing table. So let's create table like. And then what we'll do is drop one and watch only the, the three files related to that particular one table disappear. So we'll create table if it doesn't exist and we'll give it a, a totally different name such as people but we'll make it like contacts underscore TBL we now have a new table let's show tables and contacts underscore TBL structurally is similar or identical structurally that is to people I guess we should say similar because the name differs but the structure or the definition of each field is identical so it isn't identical overall from the file system perspective let's LSLTR we turned on K just to see the output in bytes thousands of bytes that is and now we have files that correlate to the people table including its index file its table data file as well as its table description or definition file the FRM file if we're to go ahead and drop the contacts underscore TBL table you'll see that the people files will remain but we would have lost the data in the contacts underscore table file so it would behoove you to output the, f the information in one table to another before dropping the table with information so that would require of course running an insert with the select option but then we'd have to specify the columns that we'd want and so on so we could execute an insert into people followed by a select in this case we want the column name let's just double check that column from contacts it's actually called name and we'll select name from contacts underscore TBL and let's just double check our column counts contacts underscore T TBL contains two table two columns that is ID and name and let's double check the people table let's describe people people 2 contains the same structure so what's happening here is it's a one to two match we'd have to actually select star to get both values and now it gets inserted it's because we're selecting one column to be inserted into potentially two columns so my SQL doesn't know which column to insert the value pulled from the name table into let's go ahead and select star from people and you'll see that people now contains two records so it's identical to contacts underscore TBL so we can f feel free to drop contacts underscore TBL let's drop table contacts underscore TBL now by the way if this is a busy system and you're the DBA there is a show open tables command that you can execute to determine whether or not a table is in use before dropping it but ideally before you drop tables especially frequently accessed tables and other object types within a DBMS you should have backed up your system at a recent point in time anyway let's drop the table and it's been dropped and from the shell we'll confirm that the files have been removed and now we're left with db.opt which remains the same in size across the board because it contains only collation as well as character set information followed by the three people table related files now if we want to drop this entire database altogether 
we'd get out of this directory because the database directory will be cleared and then simply drop database dummy underscore db which will clobber everything notice when you drop the database mysql's terminal monitor shifts you from the context of the database dummy underscore db to the context of none and from a file system perspective the directory dummy underscore db no longer exists so be very careful when using the drop ddl statement because it wipes just like that any useful information or any related information to your tables and database structures